Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are continuing our series on LoRaWAN and Niagara. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at getting our gateway set up and running and uh, connected and talking to one of our LoRaWAN sensors. So let's jump over into the browser now where we're going to do all the configuration on our gateway and get going. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my gateway up and I'm talking to it at uh, 192.168.2.1. That's the default IP address that the multi-tech gateways are gonna come out of the box at, which means most likely you'll be connecting directly to it from your computer. Get yourself a little USB to ethernet adapter so that you have an additional uh, ethernet connection on your computer and uh, you'll be off and running. That's how I'm doing this here now. Um, you only need that as your initial setup. Once we go in here and log in, we can change that IP address to be whatever we need to talk on our local area network. So this initial screen that you get when you plug in the 192.168.2.1 in the browser is a little bit deceiving. It looks like a, a login screen, a normal login screen, but actually what it's doing is asking you to register your first administrator user. So I'm going to do that now and you, there's not a default in here. You're plugging in what you want to use as the username and password for the admin. So I'm going to do that now and hit OK. And now that administrator user was registered and then now I'm logging in. So I'll do the username and password that I just set up and we're good to go there. Uh, one thing to note is if you screw something up here or you put in a password and you fat finger it and you can't get in in the future, the reset button on the back of the gateway, press and hold it for 30 seconds when there's power applied to the gateway already, press and hold for 30 seconds and you'll go back to your factory defaults. So you'll go back to 192.168.2.1 and back to no username and password for the login and you'll get that commissioning screen that we were just looking at. So first time setup now, we will click through. We don't need this uh, remote management. Our time is, uh, let's see, America and we'll say America, New York. And it is not the 27th of September. It is the November 25th at, come on, 12.22 p.m. And we'll say next. And... Now you can change your interface that you want to use for uh, the IP address, excuse me, that you want to use for your Ethernet interface. And I'm going to change that uh, to something on my local network. So give me one second here. And all right, so I know 50 is clear on my network. So I'm going to use 50 and then I'm going to hit OK. And I don't need any of this remote management stuff at the moment. Um, we want to use uh, HTTP and HTTPS. I just like to turn them both on so that we have the options. And then we'll say finish. And then we will say save and apply up here. And now it's going to reboot our gateway with the proper IP settings. Uh, that we just set and changed. So now I'm going to move some cables around and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got that IP address moved over. I've got my Ethernet cable moved over and you can see I'm now talking to my gateway at 1.50. I'm gonna log in again if I don't fat finger this. Log in again with that username and password that I set up initially. And now we are into the web interface for this gateway. 
So now if I, uh, one of the first things that I like to do is go into administration. This is something that's going to bug you a lot with the default settings, especially if you're like on this page making some changes, you jump into Niagara and you're looking at stuff and you come back. By default, the session timeout on your login when you're using this interface is only five minutes. I like to change it to 30 minutes. Just makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to constantly uh, be re-logging in to this interface. Um, every time we make a change on any of these pages, you're going to hit submit at the bottom as you would expect. And then you'll get this save and apply in the top right hand corner. You're going to want to hit that as well after you make the changes so that it saves it to its memory. So when you go to restart the device or something like that, those changes are there and available and uh, used every time the device comes up. So that particular change, for whatever reason, requires the device to reboot. So I'll let it reboot and I'll be back again once it's done. All right, back up and log back in. So next thing I'm going to do just real quick is I'm going to go into setup here on the left and the network interfaces. And then I'm just going to take a peek and make sure everything looks good here on my IPv4 settings. Um, I should be okay here, but what I, I do like to do just in case is make sure my gateway is also set. Um, otherwise, the gateway... This LoRaWAN gateway doesn't know how to talk to devices outside of my subnet. That may or may not be an issue for you, um, but it's a good thing to set just to be safe. And the same thing here with the DNS server. I'm going to set that as well. Again, probably not really necessary unless you're talking to the outside internet, but I'm going to do it anyways. And again, once I make this change, it's going to tell me that it needs to reboot. So we will reboot and I'll be right back. All right, so we are back now in the gateway and we rebooted and we have all of our basic settings set up. Next, we're gonna get into the actual LoRaWAN configuration and the first piece of that is going into the LoRaWAN button here on the left and the network settings. Out of the box, you can see that LoRaWAN is actually completely disabled and we wanna change that. So we have a couple different modes that we can put this gateway into. The mode that we are going to want to use and you're going to want to use for the most part is this network server mode. And we're going to switch to that and then it opens up a whole bunch of other settings that we can potentially do. So the next piece that we'll do is make sure that um, our channel is on the U.S. version because we're in the United States. If you're not in the United States, obviously uh, set it for whichever uh, frequency is required for your area. Um for the sake of this video, we're only going to be talking about the, the U.S. related stuff and the U.S. related channels. So we'll save that as it is, and then we will hit submit and hit save and apply. Hit OK. It'll apply the changes, and then it'll refresh this page for us, and we should see all of our LoRaWAN related servers that are running on the device come up now as running and that's exactly what we're seeing here now our network server and our packet forwarder are both showing as running good to go there next we're going to go over to the next option down on the left which is our key management and this is where we're going to set up and pair our sensors with our actual gateway we're going to change this location uh, by default it's going to try to use the lens join server which is kind of like an online uh, join server from multi-tech we want to do this all locally so we're going to change to a local join server and then we're going to change our default uh, device profile to be the us one and then we're going to set a, a passphrase. This can be uh, anything, basically. Keep note of it. You probably won't end up actually needing it for anything. Um, but just keep it in mind. And then once you set that, we're going to hit submit. Oops, I use special characters. And it doesn't like special characters. Forgot about that. Uh, let's try this one more time. Okay, we'll hit submit and we're good there. Now we can do save and apply, apply the configuration and we can go in and now add in our device credentials to add in the device itself. This is where uh, 
pieces that I talked about in our first video in this series where uh, scanning the QR codes from the little cards that you get with your sensors makes your life a whole lot easier. So what I did was I scanned the uh, QR code for my sensor here. If I jump out of this real fast so you can see this. This is all of the data that we're going to end up needing when we go to add in our device now. And I'll, I'll point out what each one of these things are as we do that. Um, and I'll grab them from this file. But this all this came directly from the QR code that I scanned on the card. And it has all the information that we'll need in order to get our device paired up with the gateway. So let me jump back uh, full screen here. And we'll do an add new for our device. So for our device EUI, that's going to be the first uh, set of letters and numbers before the first colon and you'll see it you can reference it based on the card where it's actually labeled specifically so we'll paste that in next is going to be our app EUI this is going to be uh, what's also called sometimes the join EUI uh, you'll see a lot of repeated or a lot of zeros in this um, string and you can see it sort of mirrors the device UI, but without the individual uh, specific device information at the end. And then lastly, we're going to need our app key. Our app key is going to be the big string with a whole bunch of letters and numbers that don't look like anything else. And that is it for our um, credentials and key information that we need to get into the gateway in order to get talking. So we'll hit OK here. And then we will hit save and apply and let that do its thing. Next, all we're doing is making sure that our sensor is actually talking uh, to our gateway and our gateway is, is reading the data that's coming out. In order to do that, we are going to go down here into our packets page. Uh, yes. And then, just do the save and re apply real quick. I'm not sure what it was looking to save, but better be safe than sorry. And so right now we see nothing on this page because of the way that the LoRaWAN sensors work. There's only data going out over the network uh, pretty infrequently. So these networks uh, and frequencies tend to be pretty empty, which is good if you have a lot of devices. There's uh, less congestion. And then, um, but it does make it a little bit more difficult um, on these initial setup portions because you need to get your device to send out data in order to make sure everything's working properly. So in order to do that, the simplest way, some sensors have different ways of doing this, uh, but the simplest way is going to be to simply pull power on your sensor and uh, apply it again. That will cause it to send out a join request and we will see that here on our um, packets page uh, when, once we force it. So let me open this sensor up and I will pull the battery real quick and then I will put the battery back in. Let it do its thing for a second or two. We'll hit refresh. And you can see now I have a join request that came in from the device EUI of the device that I just added in. And you can see it was a success. And uh, we now have data coming in as we expect. And in the next video, we'll take this a step further. We will look at the data that's available to us from this sensor because this is a multi-text sensor, which means all of the profile and um, decoder information is built into the gateway here, which makes our lives much easier. We'll cover the other side um, of adding in your own decoder for a third-party sensor here in the future. But in this case, super simple. Um, we'll set it up so that we can send out this data over BACnet IP from the gateway and then we'll go into Niagara and make sure we're reading that data as we expect to and uh, massage it a little bit so that we get exactly um, the display of the data that we want to see on the Niagara side. So hopefully that was helpful and informative to you. Uh, the setup process, as, as you can see on the multi-tech gateways, is not actually particularly difficult, just knowing the right places to go and the proper drop-downs to set. So thanks for watching. Um, 
like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment down below with any questions or videos you'd like to see in the future or more details you'd like to see covered. And uh, check us out at BrodyPrecision.com and store.BrodyPrecision.com for any of your LoRaWAN, BACnet IP, Niagara-related needs. Uh, stay tuned for the next video in the series, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.